What's up, you guys? I'm coming on and we're talking about another topic. Answering the burning question is vegetables and herbs, do they truly have antiviral properties? Um, while we're not speaking about COVID today, um, the reason is, is because there's no studies that have been done with any natural remedies, elderberry, garlic, none of them. Um, none of them have been studied with COVID, but we should not dismiss um, what food and herbs are there and the antiviral properties that they do have. Um, trying to get a little bit back to normal, um, the new normal, in the sense of COVID is all we're hearing about right now. And if you guys want COVID info, I mean, like I said, it's very minimal research and I'm all about being evidence-based. I just want to make sure there's research and anything that I recommend and do. Um, so there's not too much besides talking about supporting the immune system and, you know, following CDC guidelines of staying home and things of that nature. Um, so there's not too much to talk about that, but I know a lot of us are just tired of everything being COVID. So that's why I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about something, I guess maybe a little similar, but there's so many other viruses out there that are so much more common that people have and struggle with day to day. And it can be herpes, it can be HIV, it can be other cold viruses, it can be influenza. There's just so much. And the research behind um, certain herbs are really beneficial in stopping the way the virus either gets into the host cell or stops replicating, all different things. And so I have my research with me um, and I just want to be going through just a couple things. Nothing overwhelming, but just a, always a good reminder that there is a food as medicine aspect. Um, and this is just what gets me fired up for what I do. Um, it's actually what brought me into what I do. Um, once I found out that plants have this healing capability, I'm like sold. I know what I'm doing for life. <laughs> so, um, let's go. So first of all, um, the one first one I have written down is oregano. And a lot of the studies that I found with oregano are more so with oregano oil, the essential oil. So you are not going to be, you're not going to get the dose if you just drizzle a little bit of like dried oregano or even cook with oregano. So a lot of the times certain herbs need it more in like a supplement form, which is why supplements can be really beneficial um, or, you know, an oil form. But with anything of that nature, I'm a huge proponent for working with your practitioner and figuring out which which things are right for you. Um, because just like with normal supplements, healthy, organic, natural supplements, they can decrease certain medications from being effective. They can increase <laughs> certain uh, medications with side effects. I mean, if you're on medications, and then just on an individual level, the herbs are very similar to what a medication it can, does it work with your body? Do you have a certain condition that maybe it doesn't? Um, there's supplements and herbs out there that help with um, insulin and blood sugar relationship. And if you have, maybe you're not on medication, but you have a blood sugar issue, it could lower your blood sugar so much that it could make you hypoglycemic. So this is why, while I share this, I'm a huge proponent for working with your practitioner, um, partnering with a functional medicine doc um, as part of your team, us, of course, um, for the food aspect of it, but always have your team of healthcare people that you can turn to. But um, anyway, so as I probably butcher some of these pronunciations, <laughs> it's a carvacrol. I think that's how you say it. Um, anyways, there is a component of oregano that has been studied against the norovirus, which is the dreaded stomach bug that we all hate. And this um, component of oregano oil was shown to interrupt the capsid that is around the virus. So basically, um, not every virus is like COVID, for an example, that has like um, this lipid envelope that protects it. Um, but in this case, oregano disrupted that membrane and damaged the RNA in the virus. There was another study um, interrupting the viral envelope again, but with the herpes virus. 
And so like I mentioned, this is more so of the oils, not, not so much of the food. Holy basil, also known as Tulsi, which is one of my favorite teas that I drink, um, probably on like a pretty regular basis. Um, this is a holy basil outside of antiviral, is very adaptogenic. So if you're struggling with stress, it's one of my favorites. Um, very gentle, but holy basil does help regulate the immune system and increases certain immune cells like your T cells, your NK cells, um, TF, um, TNF, as well as um, actually the one study I linked, I did not write the, I mean, I linked it up, but I did not write right here what journal it was, but it was a randomized, double blind and controlled, which is some of the best types of studies. And then it was also studied against the herpes virus um, to stop the viral replication. In peppermint, sage, and lemon balm, there was a study with all three and then also other studies individualized. But one study with all three showed that in an aqueous extract, um, it stopped HIV from replicating compared to the controls. And it also stopped the virus from entering the host cell, which is we, us, we're usually the host cell. Um, because we're such gracious hosts, we are what viruses love, um, as well as animals, to get into our cells and do their damage. So with just lemon balm though, it was shown to be effective against the influenza virus from stopping the virus from replicating. And peppermint individual was studied against RSV, which is that awful respiratory virus that a lot of um, little kiddos get. And peppermint in this study also went into how many antioxidants were found in peppermint, reducing the free radical damage that can happen when we have all these inflammatory mediators going, um, just the body just being more inflamed in general. And it also lowered levels of TNF and interleukins and prostaglandins and these. So it had this anti-inflammatory property to it as well. Garlic is one of my faves that I always tend to turn to. Um, there's a lot of studies back in the 90s of garlic and common colds and whatnot. But the latest research, I didn't really find anything that was too amazing. I just don't know if they, the, they, I don't, I don't want to say they stopped studying it, but there isn't a lot of new stuff. And the new stuff is, it's like they're poking holes through it and they're just like, they're not really sure um, if that's the case anymore. But I did find a really good study outside of being like antiviral. So a lot of the studies I'm mentioning, when I say they're antiviral, right, they, I'm talking about stopping the virus from replicating, stopping the virus from getting inside the host cell. But if we just look that doesn't, I'm not always including just the immune modulating um, benefits of it. So like with garlic, I found a lot of good stuff on how garlic helps support the immune system, regulate, regulates it, and helping, your, helping it keep your body into homeostasis, which is really important because I know we've had a lot of talk with like cytokine storms lately. So garlic was shown to promote certain macrophages and immune cells, but help regulate that cytokine secretion and having this anti-inflammatory property as well. So again, even though something doesn't have this direct study or has been shown to stop the, the viral process, um, our immune system, that's what, that's what they do. But so we just gotta make sure that we're actually fueling our bodies and giving it what it needs so it can do the job it's meant to do. And my last herb that I wrote down um, is echinacea, also a very common one that I love. Um, echinacea, certain um, herbs like echinacea, elderberry, um, they do, they are con contraindicated with autoimmune. Doesn't mean that you can't use it if you're autoimmune, but you just gotta be careful. This is where your practitioner is really helpful. Um, it has been shown to be very effective against various respiratory illnesses, influenza, rhinovirus, um, viruses like herpes, and then different parts of the echinacea plant was taken and was shown to stop the replication of a virus. And there's different parts of echinacea, the root, the leaves, the beautiful flower. I don't know if you've ever seen an echinacea flower. It's really pretty. Um, but certain different parts of the echinacea plant helped with different viruses. So some parts were more um, effective with herpes and some were more effective with um, colds and flus. So 
And outside of that, vitamin C um, will always be your go-to. So eating foods that are higher in vitamin C, um, acerola cherries, if you are looking into a supplement, of course, there's your peppers and oranges and a, a lot of different produce um, that have vitamin C. But this helps play such a big role in the beginning process of the immune response to viral infections. So again, it's all about just having your body, um, having your, providing your body with what it needs so it can function good. So sticking with those good, wholesome, fresh, organic foods, just support, 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 support. So um, I was super happy that I could come on and talk to you guys. If you have any questions, uh, maybe you have, you've heard of a different supplement or food and I maybe didn't cover it and you want to know if there is research, um, shoot shoot me a comment in the comments and I will get back to you with, with evidence-based goodness. Thanks guys. See ya next week.